Welcome to the first edition of AWS Quick Start, which is an online event designed to help our customers start or ramp up their AWS cloud journey. My name's Frank Arrigo, and I'm a manager of Solution Architects, and we help customers across Victoria, Tassie, WA, and South Australia. Today, for the next 25 minutes, I'll be taking you through how AWS pricing works and show you how you can effectively estimate the cost of running your specific project on AWS with our simple monthly calculator. AWS Quick Start is the first edition of a new online learning series AWS will be develop, delivering to accelerate your success on AWS Cloud. We have AWS experts on hand to answer any questions you may have during the presentation. Feel free to post your questions at any time in the Q&A console of this platform. At the conclusion of this session, I'll run through the most frequently asked questions and point you to the most relevant resources including tutorials and quick start guides associated with this topic. At AWS, we always continually aim to improve on how we are able to service our customers better. If we can ask for two minutes of your time at the very end to give us some of your feedback on this session, that would be most helpful. Now, before we get started with the foundational aspects, I wanna level set a little bit and show you the basics around AWS for those new to the platform. This is a visualization of the AWS services and solutions we offer today. We have over 100 services, which include our core services like compute, storage, and database, and more advanced services like AI, machine learning, and IoT, which are all accessible with a click of a button through our self-service platform. Our session today will be on how pricing works in AWS, which actually touches on all of these services. Now, all of these services sit on top of our global infrastructure with comprises of 16 regions, 44 availability zones, and 100 plus edge locations for our content delivery network. With AWS, you can go global in minutes as deploying in Sydney works exactly the same as deploying in the US or Europe, for example. Now, each region consists of two or more availability zones. This is an important concept also from a functional point of view these availability zones, or AZs as we call them, are geographically isolated and fully independent clusters of data centers. However, the availability zones are close enough together because they're in a geographical region that you can have single digit millisecond latency between AZs. This means you can run active, active applications and databases across AZs. Also important to know is that we don't move around your data. If you put it in a region, it stays in that region. Since AWS's inception in 2006, our customer base has been accelerating. And when the Sydney launch, our Sydney region launched in 2012, it grew even more. Today, tens of thousands of customers across Australia and New Zealand use the AWS platform, from startups all the way to enterprise scale organizations. So in this session, we'll be covering the following topics. First, we'll walk through the overarching value proposition of cloud computing from an economic point of view. Next, we'll touch on the AWS pricing fundamentals. And finally, we'll uh, wrap up with a demonstration of a simple monthly calculator. So I'm sure many of you understand the concept of cloud computing, but I'd like to start with a short overview so that we're at the start of the value proposition. When trying to understand what cloud computing is and the benefit it provides, think about how the industrial revolution modernized our manufacturing processes. Back then, businesses had their own generators to power their buildings with electricity. This was a great inv invention, but it took time to get those generators up and running. And ultimately, businesses were responsible for maintaining those pieces of equipment. When the power grid was developed, it allowed businesses to leverage the resources already procured by a company and through a fee gave, gain access to the electricity needed. This also allowed customers to access any additional enhancements or upgrades made to the power grid. So fast forward to the 20th century when com companies built their own data centers to run these, their businesses. This required a large upfront capital investment, lengthy procurement cycle and placing the responsibility of creating, running and maintaining all the software and hardware for the business on a group of dedicated resources. As a result, businesses had a tough time keeping up with upgrades and introducing new functionality. 
They were slow to respond to customer needs and changes in the market. With cloud computing, companies are able to host their applications, mission critical workloads, special projects on the infrastructure built and maintained by a third party provider. This allows companies to avoid large upfront hardware investments and only pay for what they use, similar to a utility. Additionally, customers receive automatic functional upgrades and access to a platform that has a lot of features. Cloud computing providers such as Amazon Web Services own and maintain the network connected hardware required for these application services, while customers provision and use what they need via web application. So what's the underlying value proposition from an economics point of view? Let's quickly walk through the typical way the public cloud provides value to customers. First, let's assume you have a good view of your predicted IT, uh, predicted demand of IT infrastructure requirements, represented by the gray dotted line. In a typical on-premise environment, you would plan for and meet this demand with periodic purchases of hardware and services ahead of when you actually needed it with large capital purchases, often, ha often having to go through lengthy prioritization, budgeting, and procurement approval cycles to do this. And you hope that you've forecasted demand correctly. But what happens if you don't forecast demand direct correctly? The variability in potential demand is shown here in red, that little squiggly line. So the impact of this is that you've either over-provisioned and wasted precious resources, shown here in green as an opportunity cost, or worse, you've under-provisioned and missed out on opportunities, shown here in the red shaded box as lost opportunities. So one of the ways moving workloads to public cloud helps you avoid these pitfalls is giving the ability to buy only when you need and to scale only when you need it, essentially matching supply with demand and saving money by doing this. So let's look at the pricing fundamentals. Gartner, McKinsey, and others have recently run studies revealing that the typical data center is at best 50% utilized, meaning that at least half of these servers in a typical data center are sitting idle. Think about that. That's an outstanding amount of computing capacity doing absolutely nothing. Are you all struggling with this? There are very deliberate reasons behind why this happens. So let's talk about some of these. One of the primary reasons this happens is to, due to the way applications are architected and the way they behave. Here's some common demand profiles of application computing requirements. You might have applications that are highly variable, like a web application. You may be running workloads that are only on part-time or workloads that are cyclic peaks and valleys in the demands. In a typical on-prem built infrastructure, you have to buy, run, and maintain server fleets that can meet peak demand while sitting idle when the demand is off these peaks. Do you really want to continue buying this way indefinitely? So AWS lets customers pay for exactly the amount of resources they actually use. First with AWS, customers do not need to invest in hardware with infrastructure before they know the demand. Instead, they can replace that upfront capital expenditure with low variable cost. Secondly, there's no minimal commitments required. This flexibility minimizes the need for detailed resource planning by the customer. Customers can start or stop using a service at any time and no long-term contracts are required. Next, for certain products, customers can invest in reserve capacity. In, one, in other words, they pay a one-time low upfront fee and their on-demand rate is reduced by 28 to 62%. For storage and data transfer, pricing is tiered. The more resources that are used, the less customers pay per gigabyte. Additionally, AWS provides offers pricing models to support variable and stable workloads. This means customers only pay for what they use. And as AWS continues to expand, it increases the economies of scale and passes these savings on to customers. The majority of AWS pricing is pay for what you provision. Pay less when you provision smaller things and pay less when things are turned off. There is also pay for use based in, on size or quantity of use for services like S3, storage, EFS and Lambda. For some services, there are also different ways to receive discounts. One type of discount is a discount in exchange for commitment. That's the reserve instance and the other spot is a heavy discount to use the spare capacity within EC2. 
So now let's do a demonstration and I'll open up the simple monthly calculator. So here we are on the simple monthly calculator. So it's laid out, all the services sit here on the left hand side. In the middle you see a, a sheet that's being, that gets built along the way as you keep adding the services. And then we're seeing, we see an estimate of what that monthly bill looks like. So I could build one on, on the fly or I can use an existing model of a, of an, of a uh, web application. So let's bring this up. So this simple, uh, this web application is using S, uh, Route 53 for our domain name. It's using the load balancing service. It's using two web servers and two application servers. And then for the database tier, we're using DynamoDB, which is the managed service for our database. It's a NoSQL database. And we're using RDS as a, both in the master as well as a slave, which is giving us a, a real time backup of all the data. And we're using S3, which is uh, being, being used to deliver the static content and the, all of our media assets. So it's a very simple and very common pattern for web applications. This particular one, we're actually running Ruby on Rails and we've got some estimations in terms of the amount of data that's being uh, delivered through there. So if we look, actually look at the details of the different components, we can see that we have some EC2 usage, we have the S3 usage, the, the Route 53 for DNS, Cloud France in there, et cetera, all the, all the different services. And I can drill down into the detail of each of these different elements and actually tweak them. So the app servers are running on a particular machine type. I can try around and see, see try different types to see what the costs look like. And as I walk through, I might make some changes. So I may decide to say, um, if we look at, where is it? CloudWatch, oh, not, not CloudWatch, CloudFront, I should say. CloudFront is our content distribution uh, service and it allows content delivery across our global network of edge locations, as I'd said. So right now, it's the, our traffic is, we're, we're assuming it's, it's in the US and in Europe but I might be able to, to adjust this and change the US distribution and add Australia in the mix. Yes, got to add up to 100. Thank you for reminding me. And we put 20% for Australia. Not 10%, sorry. That adds up to 100. And now it recalculates what the, what the cost of our bill would be. So this allows us to test which services we want to use, what the cost would be, and gives the, a, an estimation of what that monthly bill would look like for, uh, for the service that we're building. So that was the demo of the simple monthly calculator. There's a new monthly calculator coming out. Uh, it only shows one service at the moment, so keep your eye open on uh, uh, what's new to, uh, to see the new calculator, but that's the URL for you. So, to maximize your investment in the cloud and in order to build a solid foundation of skills within your organization, we also strongly suggest looking into AWS certification paths towards solution architecture, DevOps, sysadmin. There are also specialized cert certifications for security operations, big data, and data warehousing. You can start online free of charge and at your pace. The AWS YouTube channel is a great source of learning materials and there's hundreds of digital classes and tutorials available on AWS training and several external educational providers. One of the most popular, which includes a cloud guru. AWS Awesome Days Online is also a great platform which is hosted twice a year. In addition, there are several meetups all around Australia hosted by customers and partners which is a great way to share and learn from other users of the platform. AWS also hosts several events during the year, which includes AWS Lunch and Learns, the Dev Lounge, and boot camps in all major cities. And AWS in Sydney also offers a great opportunity for customers, which offers hundreds of educational sessions and bring together the AWS partner ecosystem across three days of learning. This will be taking place at the end of April in 2019. An email will be going out following this session in a couple of days' time, which will share details of th these activities for you to access. So the AWS ecosystem ensures you're not alone in making this journey. We have support, we have an AWS partner network, we have dedicated AWS account teams, of which I'm part of. And we've also provided some quick start resources 
So it's, here's are some handy links to give you some more information. So thank you for your time today. I hope it's been useful. As mentioned, we'll be sending out an email post this session to provide you access to training and events available in Australia and New Zealand. Please ensure to indicate during the poll questions if you would be interested in attending these which have very limited seats. So please take the next couple of minutes to complete our poll survey to ensure we can continually improve and meet your needs.